Merck getting the green light from the FDA for its COVID-19 antiviral pill. Shares initially positive on the news, but quickly turned back into the red, finished lower. The stock falling 17% from its highs in November after Pfizer's antiviral pill proved more effective against hospitalization and deaths than Merck's. Joining us now here first on CNBC for an interview, Merck Senior Vice President of Medical Global Affairs, Dr. Eliav Barr and our Meg Terrell joins as well. Dr. Barr, thanks for being with us. In light of that news about Pfizer, everyone's comparing the two pills. There is 90% effective at keeping people away from hospitals, yours at 30%. So with that in mind, who should be getting this pill now that doctors can prescribe it? Well, first of all, I just want to be clear that those two medicines have not been tested in a head-to-head -head trial. It's difficult to compare populations. There's a some significant differences in the clinical trials. But in any event, uh, we're very thrilled that Molnupiravir has gotten emergency use authorization. Uh, the medicine should be given uh, to patients who are at risk for complications from COVID-19, uh, who are have uh, had symptoms less than five days. So uh, if they have uh, symptoms for less than five days and they've got a high risk for COVID-19 uh, and there's nothing else available uh, in the uh, in terms of uh, uh, interventions that the doctors already prescribed, then of course, multipiravir is an excellent possibility. The other warning with this is that it is not for pregnant women, of course, because of the mechanism, I guess it could cause mutations. What do we know about this potential safety concern? So we haven't studied the um, medicine in pregnant women. And so, and uh, given that uh, and some preclinical findings, uh, the recommendation is that women of childbearing potential should uh, uh, take effective contraception for five days, uh, that is the course of therapy, and then for four days thereafter. But, you know, thinking about it, it, it that is uh, a small price to pay, so to speak, for a medicine that, that has, has reduced deaths uh, due to COVID by 90%. So while hospitalizations were uh, somewhat less reduced, the most important endpoint, the one as a doctor that I'm really worried about is, will a patient be alive or dead? That was reduced by 90%. So we're very, very excited about that. Well, Dr. Barr, it's Meg Terrell. That's something I wanted to ask you about. Are we focusing too much on this 30 percent figure, particularly since it changed between the interim and the final result from 50 to 30? Is is this the effect of this drug, in a sense, getting sort of understated here? And I want you also to, to tell us your reactions to the fact that France canceled an order and the FDA language, you know, saying if other drugs aren't available or appropriate, Merck's drug should be used. Are we understating the benefits here when you look at the, the number of deaths it prevented? Well, first of all, I think it's important to have uh, for, for um, physicians and for patients to have as many tools in their toolkit as possible to fight COVID-19, especially with uh, the Omicron virus and uh, the fact that this medicine uh, seems to be active against Omicron in in vitro experiments. Uh, in terms of the uh, the uptake, uh, we've had, uh, as you know, orders from BARDA. Uh, we've had uh, additional doses being requested by the United Kingdom uh, and other supply agreements in other countries. Uh, really, what's important here is that we have a tool that is easy to take, doesn't really require other medicines, uh, worrying about what other medicines people are taking, uh, can be administered to patients who've got kidney disease and any other diseases that, that, that uh, we have, and uh, is able to really reduce uh, the risk of both hospitalization and uh, death due to COVID. That's a really important point. It's something that is very convenient for patients. And in this huge wave of Omicron, I think it's going to be quite important for patients.